Obviously, we are not in Minnesota right now. We are on the set of the Around the NFL podcast at the NFL Network Studios in California. I'm joined by one of the hosts, Mark Sessler. This is a pretty cool setup. Yeah, we feel pretty lucky. I mean, we've got like colored graphics and everything. We we, yeah. we were just talking about we were in a, used to be in Culver City, a different part of LA, and the studio was like five feet by six feet. So. Uh, arrow up. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You leveled up, and and the show is something to look forward to. You just recently just wrapped up a show here just a few minutes ago. Yeah. What was the hot topic of conversation? Well, we did. Uh, this was a new segment for us. But we did a mock draft with the guests, and three of us went through the top ten. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, the Vikings were a hot topic, <laughs> no doubt about it, because I think it's just a foregone conclusion at this point because of Questy and the the gang of like basically used the last two off seasons to get to this point where mm-hmm. you move on from Kirk Cousins, which made logical sense. Um, you go get that quarterback that you want. And I think it's the kind of quarterback class where it's not like you have to get up to number two. Like you could go, I, in our situation, they went up to number four and it's like, that makes a lot of sense. Like you're going to get maybe J.J. J. McCarthy right there mm-hmm. and you trust Kevin O'Connell to work wonders with quarterbacks. And then you're in that special window where you're working with a rookie quarterback contract, which was the polar opposite of the you know expensive veteran Kirk Cousins experience. You say they moved up to get J.J. McCarthy. Mm-hmm. What other name or, or, or is that was that your pick or is there another name you think that could fit O'Connell's system? I really think that the way that Kevin O'Connell belongs to these tree of coaches that maximize quarterbacks and make it friendly, that it's good for a rookie, number one. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I look at all four of those guys at the top of the draft. Like, I mean, Caleb Williams is going to Chicago, but if it's Jaden or if it's if it's uh, even someone like Michael Penix, if he fell to them, I think that like Drake May, though, would fit very well. So. Mm It's a great quarterback class. A lot of times when you get down to the fourth, fifth quarterback, they're in a much different tier and they're like late, you know, second, third round type pick. I think the Vikings have to, number one, if you're in this experiment, this adventure, you have to feel good about three or four of them. You really do because it's going to get more and more expensive. But I think J.J. McCarthy um, is in other years would have gone, you know, one or two. He's, his, his name is rising yeah. and I just trust the Viking system to make the most of them. So I think they probably feel comfortable with a number of guys. What makes you trust the Viking system? Well, I, I think it starts with Kevin O'Connell. I think he's mm-hmm. been like, like a really even keeled um, coach who's gotten, a, he, I think he got the best out of Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. Um, they, I think the, the front office has done a more modernized approach to, you know, gathering draft picks, putting themselves in position. And, I, you know, they they had to make some tough choices last offseason. And, you know, certainly in that, that's in that case, too. But the, when you go get Aaron Jones, for instance, I think that is a major upgrade at running back. And it's like you're stealing from a foe in your own division. And they, and that thing with Brian Flores is an excellent defensive coach who gets mm-hmm. the most out of whatever he's given, but they've added some help on defense as well. And so I think it's like another year forward in a plan of a team that did, it wasn't a rebuild, it was kind of a soft reboot, mm-hmm. um, move on from what they were. And I think it gives Vikings fans a sense that there's a calm, there's some wisdom here in how we're running the show, which is not true of every NFL team from a year to year basis. I think I you might have just coined a brand new term, soft reboot. That is fantastic. I think that's kind of what Quasey and Kevin Allen always talk about when they say it's sure. a competitive rebuild but a soft reboot that's a good one yeah i, I don't, don't know like if i that coined that coin but it? we could we could pretend that i did if i <laughs> if not yeah so when you look at what all the pieces that they put into place and what the other moves in the nfc north are i know also recently on around the nfl podcast you guys discussed the nfc north situation yeah how do you think the vikings have fared in the competitiveness of that division going forward i think you're you're sort of forced to do as much as you can because you know the nfc north was um there were some questionable operations in there for a long period of time. The Lions were the Lions. The Bears were hot and cold. And the Packers had, you know, under Aaron Rodgers, they were the Packers. But now the Packers are reborn on, in some sense with a new quarterback and a lot of young offensive talent. Uh, the Lions have become a completely different operation from what we've ever known them to be. And the Bears in the last two off seasons, you know, like the Vikings and other teams have put themselves in a good position. So they're in a dogfight. I mean, it's like, but I also think that they must feel very confident with their plan. And it's like they aren't the clear third or fourth team in this division. I think it's up for grabs. But the NFC North rebuild and relaunch in general has been one of the bigger stories of the past three years in the NFL, I think. All right. So I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit real quick before we wrap this one up. Okay. Do you have any surprising Vikings takes heading into the draft? Or is there any steam that you're hearing that you're like, yes, you should listen to this? 
I mean, I really think that the most shocking thing that could happen is if they go, don't go get the quarterback. And I think that's okay. going to use up your draft capital um, at the top of the draft. Mm-hmm. And then you try to find guys to help that young quarterback out. But I, I think like what they've done is the most surprising thing in the sense that like they've done a nice job of getting in this position. And I, I, I think you don't want a lot of drama. I don't want to be surprised by what they do because I expect them to go get the quarterback of the future. And if they did something, if they took a hard right turn out of that plan, I'd be sort of questioning what there the move is there. So <laughs> stick to the plan. Please. Yeah, no drama. That. We don't want any drama on draft day, right? Exactly. I like that. Exactly. I like that. Thank you so yeah. much, Mark sure. Sessler, for joining us. Of you course, you can hear him on Around the NFL podcast, wherever you get your podcast or on NFL.com.